Hi guys, welcome to DevOps School. In this video tutorial, you can see Microsoft Azure DevOps demo session by our expert. If you want to become a certified Azure DevOps professional, then enroll in our Microsoft Azure DevOps training and certification program. So, first of all, let us understand what is cloud, why is cloud, and what is Azure DevOps. But to understand uh, the things that I have told, let us go back a few, like a uh, few years ago, from where it all started. So earlier we were having data centers or physical servers where our applications, our databases, all the infrastructures have been hosted. Okay. After that, it got evolved. Then the virtualization came into place. Okay. The virtualization tools came into place. You all people are IT guys, so I I won't be explaining these things in very brief because you will be getting uh, uh, quick, okay? Because you are already in uh, IT domain. So after that, the virtualization came into place. Virtualization um, tools includes VMware, Hyper-V, Citrix, Zenapp. Citrix was the first virtualization that came into place where they were using a single point of infrastructure and on that ESXi host or a logical layer has been developed under uh, above which you can spin up multiple vms like linux vms windows vms um, uh, mac os vms any vms any number of vms you can spin up but that will be extracting or that will be using the same source of hardware maybe the cpu maybe the storage maybe the ram all of that after that i will just put a question towards you for example you people have got a job so some uh, someone may be from hyderabad someone may be from chennai someone may be from delhi someone may be from bangalore for example uh, someone who is from uh, some who is from hyderabad they have got a, a job in bangalore he have to relocate he or she have to re relocate so after relocating will you take a flat to stay or will you rent a flat to stay means will you buy a flat or will you rent a flat to stay what do you guys will do Guys, I need answers. This is an interactive session. Okay. Rent a flat. Rent a flat. Correct. So many uh, customers, many organize, uh, many clients came into the picture and they want their requirement. So as the um, world is evolving, the requirement is also evolving. So they want that they want to host their infrastructure or their application for a time being, but they don't want to invest on the data center because they have to buy a land they have to build a three or floor floor data center they have to give the electricity cost the maintenance cost the workforce cost so so many things will be there so it is I'm, I'm, uh, like it is uh, millions of rupees of investment so as compared to that they want that we can host our infrastructure in someone other's data center on a sharing basis so that we can actually use that we can actually consume that for whichever time period we like after that we can stop it so we have the freedom to do that so for those kind of requirement cloud came into picture so the first cloud was aws after that a azure came gcp came ibm cloud came oracle cloud came so many things are there so cloud infrast or cloud environment or cloud infrastructure is uh, uh, offering or is a uh, 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 asset you can say so using the cloud infrastructure you can the customers the clients can spin up their environment can host their environment their applications for the time being for the amount of resources resources means the cpu the memory the ram for all for example a client 100 vms they want uh, 500 gb each vm so it is coming on 500 into 100 plus 12 uh, uh, 16 gb of ram in each vm 16 into 500 16 into 100 so like that so whatever the infrastructure they want they can spin up they can host it and whatever the time frame they want they can use it and up to whatever amount or whatever um, uh, 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 like uh, time uh, uh, frame they want they can host uh, host their environment after this i guess you people all all will be knowing so uh, containers is the near future okay so containers is a component where you can spin up your virtual machine without any uh, um, connection 
without any connection with the data center or server and there is a microsecond of lag or spinning up a new container or new pod means for example a pod or any nodes is down in microsecond a new pod will be created in that node so that's the beauty of container it is one of the most see every business will go will go for we want effective measure we want effective productivity effective outcome but with uh, a standard cost so containers is uh, is giving uh, clients the same thing so this is the full uh, uh, you can say infrastructure uh, and its division across the uh, few decades now let us come into a few thing so cloud cloud is of three types uh, this is very basic i am just going i know you already know these things but i'm just i will take just one minute one minute one minute into each of this public private and hybrid so what is public cloud whenever like uh, nishant or abhishek has came and they have started a new organization they want that okay so uh, we want a public cloud where we will be sharing the infrastructure with uh, other clients also with other companies also so for example there is a big data center there are uh, uh, microsoft is giving 1000 gbs of ram and 10000 gbs of storage and cpus virtual cores okay so um, nishant want that okay i want uh, i have tried my company i want 100 vms and this is this is my requirement uh abhishek will told that i have a mid-level company i have thousand employees i want 500 vms i have this 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 kind of requirement so this kind of things will come in the public cloud where you can host your infrastructure host your environment on a sharing basis okay next come private cloud so maybe uh akruti have came and she told that okay i'm from mercedes-benz or i'm from uh audi i don't have any issues uh, for hosting my infrastructure environment but i want my data to be safe so i want a private cloud so only the resources or only the for example a data center have five, flo five floors so the first floor will be directly given to a single uh uh, client or single customer okay so microsoft amazon google they don't have clients did they have customers the service based companies have clients the product based companies have customers okay so that's the thing uh, so uh, they uh, so uh, microsoft will be telling that okay you can take your private cloud you can host your environment we'll be giving a bunch of um, infrastructure dedicatedly for your environment okay after that we have hybrid cloud environment hybrid cloud environment is actually used for uh, hosting infrastructure which is on different parts actually i was working for airbus uh, in france last year so uh, they were hosting their hybrid cloud environment means uh, the federal government clients the bank clients the, uh, the all those kind of clients the military clients they don't put their databases on cloud they still have their database and the secure data in their on-premise environment but they will spin up the uh, front end of the back-end applications in cloud and it's a mixture of uh, cloud on-premise environment and virtualization environments so those kind of environments known as hybrid cloud okay uh, now let's come is to microsoft offerings microsoft offerings are of three types one is is and pass and sas is is infrastructure as a service when you host your infrastructure that is is when you host your environment or applications but you don't want to uh, take headache of the underlying infrastructure the cloud provider will be taking uh, or will be managing the underlying infrastructure so there those are pass components platform as a service after that we have software as a service for example a startup come and they want that i want 100 outlook ids i want um, 10 gbs of data in my sharepoint so microsoft have the product that is already developed they will be providing a namespace of the product to a client or sorry to a customer and they will be hosting the environment or they will be implementing their requirement okay now uh, microsoft is having three portals one is the main portal is known as portal.azure.com which is the main portal after that we have dev.azure.com and after that we have adf.azure.com dev.azure.com is for the devops 
adf.azure.com is for the data analytics or big data that is azure data factory so let us go into the azure portal and uh, how it will work let us see this okay so you can see that these are the things that are available over here uh, let me see let me see mm, uh, okay fine so this is the thing so let us first talk about the az advanced with it so uh, azure cloud is like a ocean over here different uh, people can work it is not so just in a company we have a managing director director senior manager managers directors uh, team leads so different people are been given different roles so in microsoft azure also different roles are there first i will talk about az advanced jyoti certification that is for azure administration people over here will be working on compute networking and storage so you people who are working on az1203 they will be working on virtual machines then cloud services disks images image versions uh, snapshots uh, host as a spring cloud application group as a spring cloud is a hybrid cloud environment offering so this will be coming under the compute in networking it's very important here uh, people will be working on virtual networks nsgs network security group asgs application security group after that load balancers uh, traffic manager application gateway nat gateways okay front doors dns zones firewall managers uh, firewall policies all these things will be coming under the networking okay which comes under the azure administration course after that it is under storage so here you will be working on storage azure give five types of storage blobs files queues tables disks we have recovery service for uh, for backups we have data lake store gen storage explorer data box azure stackage all these things will come under storage and this three uh, sub components combine as az103 or azure administration certificate after that we have az103 azure development where people will be working on web mobile and databases so in web you will be working on app services you can spin up or you can deploy any kind of applications .net java golang python ruby uh, any kinds of application you can host in app services we have api management services to manage the underlying apis maybe the front end and the back end apis we have signal r we have app service plans we have cdn profiles we have media services part platform part platform is a very very uh, new tool uh, uh, like in my current organization they have recently introduced it so i like it very much I will show you one thing. So, if you are techy and if you uh, want to learn new things, I guess Power Apps will be one of the best things that you can learn. So, Power Apps is kind of an application where you can create your own um, web application in just one hour. There are many um, uh, templates that are available. You just need to take it. You want uh, you would, uh, want to uh, modify any HTML documents or any other documents. You can modify that. Uh, uh, any front-end uh, scenarios you want to modify you want to add some text you can modify it after that you can deploy in the server they give uh, demo servers over here you can deploy it and your uh, web application URL will be running in the local host okay so these are very uh, uh, big plat uh, very uh, big product of Microsoft that I personally like okay after that let's come to the mobile we have app services power platform notification hubs databases azure cosmos db i guess the persons who are working in database who are database guys they know that we have no sql databases like mongodb the alternative of mongodb is azure cosmos db in azure we have post jury sqls we have MariaDB sqls sql servers sql databases we have very good Thing as it's called elastic pool it can spin up multiple vms within seconds if the traffic is crossing the frequency we have sql managed instances we have sql virtual machines sql server registries database migration from on-premise environment to azure all these things will be coming under the database and these three things combine az203 okay after that uh, az uh, after that there is dp200 dp201 for data engineers so these things come under this part data analytics okay so data analytics where i guess you people have heard of uh, big data like hadoop pig spark scala hive so all those are open source or on-premise big data here this is a cloud big data it will do the same work as your data bricks as your data fact which is already over hadoop we have azure data lake uh, uh, we have hd insights clusters azure data explorer clusters all these things are microsoft big data components okay 
after that we have ai 100 and ai 101 that is for uh, data scientist so the people over there will be working on bot services cognitive services machine learning uh, bonsai machine learning uh, studios all these things with that they will be working on iot it is one of uh, i guess uh, your people knows that iot and quantum um, uh, uh, like quantum cloud computing will be the future like 10 years down the line and if you are in that right now then you will be the master at that point of time okay so i don't know uh, how many people have heard about quantum cloud computing but uh, like it's uh, uh, the next gen of ml ml and ai okay machine learning and artificial intelligence so uh we have iot hubs we have function apps we have logic apps we have event hubs we have iot central applications even grid subscriptions uh we have azure stack we have notification hubs azure maps all these things which come from the iot and ai and ml and this combines the ai 100 and ai 101 ai 300 and 301 is a solution architect which is a combination of az 103 and az203 administration and development okay now one thing is left as Azure security engineer I will show you so that comes under the IM on the broader side of IM that is identity and access management where people will be working on this one people will be working on ADDS activity domain services ADFS activity federation services AD connect health and they will be working on AD security AD connect security licenses and enterprise application identity governments it is all about managing the access providing the access modifying the access of people of applications of APIs across your organization in different different environments okay we have security we have azure key vault where you can keep your uh, username password or any secret keys and you can uh, just call the url you don't have to hard code the value of that and it will be taken from the azure key vault we have ad identity protection uh, authentication methods mfn sso multi-factor authentication and single sign-on we have azure ad risk azure read connections ad password all these things will come from the security okay so this two combines az 500 now let us come to our conclusion that is az 400 which is our training topic so over here over here we will be working on the devops we will be working on azure devops organization we will be working on application insights we will be working on api management services devops starter this is the thing and with that with that we will also be working on containers sorry we will also be we, uh, we will also be working on containers we will be working on asi asf aks and asf Azure Container Instances, Azure Container Registries, ACR, ASF, Azure Service Library, which is used for um, mm, uh, mm, microservice deployment, not for monolithic architectures. And then we have AKS, Azure Kubernetes Services. So uh, like uh, this is the four component that I provide training additionally, because I think that with cloud Kubernetes and uh, uh, containerization is a part of DevOps. So it is very, very important to understand containers. okay so uh before going forward let us go ahead in the devops portal before that uh let me just uh, uh show this thing to you okay fine this is the thing that i was talking about so how many of you guys know the devops flow or how devops work uh, what is ci cd anyone any answers from you guys one liner two liner three liner whatever you knows guys any answers first uh, so i think it's a development methodology wherein we continuously integrate and continuously deliver the code so that we don't have to wait okay that's good uh, that's a valid point anyone else want to add some points guys anyone else okay fine i will tell it so this is i should uh, this is devops or on premise devops okay so here what you need to do uh, you people can uh, see that there is a part where you plan it 
where you code it where you build it where you test it release deploy operate monitor so first of all when the requirement comes from the client the client want an application a web application and an ios application as well as an android application that's the main requirement that's the thing so uh okay she was telling continuous integration continuous deployment okay <laughs> so after the planning we need to write the code the code has been written in git the code is known as git and the place where it stores is known as github for example your name is nishant you stay in your home so that is an that is having an address it's just like that source control repository can be of many ways or many types for example um uh, github bitbucket subversion azure repos github enterprise server your local all your you, your local uh, computer is also a repository repository is anything where you can store things that's all okay after the code we build it we build using selenium after that we have test so for the testing we use many tests like jmeter junit those people who are in testing their nose or load runner okay after that we have release so for the cd or the uh, for the deployment we have release and then after the release we do the deployment the deployment is done through ansible or ansible tower for build and test we use jenkins for the operation we have splunk or uh, nagios for monitoring we have grafana we have uh, dynatrace so all these tools combine for the devops cycle okay one minute okay fine so but let us understand let us understand this when we are doing this cycle or when we are going through it we are using six to seven different tools that are available we are using six to seven different tools that are available but what microsoft is giving for example i will just ask a open question to you guys okay you have gone outside and you have a requirement okay uh, i guess many of you are married even so maybe uh, like uh, your wife has told okay go out and uh, do some groceries after that bring some electronic items and you have to buy some clothes some shoes and many things are there like for example you have a requirement to buy a furniture to buy clothes to buy electronic items to buy groceries so will you go to different different shops or will you go to a shopping mall or a uh, or a mm, uh, uh, a mall where every things is available or any outlet or any spencers outlet or any uh, um, um, uh, supermarket where everything is available what do you guys will do guys answers yes no i am not married uh, we'll, we'll go to a mall where everything is available yeah so so the thing is now we need to understand what azure is giving us you can see this thing that azure is giving us everything under a single umbrella where you can see that we have azure boards which is used for user story tracking just like jira we have azure repos which is a source control repository it is alternative of github or bitbucket or subversion or any other source code repository we have pipelines where you can do ci as well as cd both understand this is very very important we have pipelines under which you can do ci build as well as deployment we have test plans where you can write your own test load a load tests uh, uh, unit test integration test performance test um uh, end user test stress test load test any kind of test plans that you want to write you can write it and you can implement in your build or release pipeline we have binary code repository which is azure artifacts there are two types of repositories one is source code repository one is binary code repository binary code repository is azure artifacts where we uh, where the output of the build pipeline has been kept with other dependencies in the dl files which use as the input of the release pipeline now if we 
if we have a small uh, understanding over here if you can see that do you need jenkins for ci we have azure pi pipelines built for ansible for cd we don't need ansible tower we have our release pipeline for source code repository uh, instead of using github bitbucket subversion we have our azure repos which is also microsoft product github which is one of the largest repository we also that is also a microsoft product instead of using nexus or jfog jfog repository nexus is an ibm product jfog is an atlassian product we have azure artifacts instead of using jira for the user story tracking we have azure boards instead of using testing tools like jmeter jmeter or other load or another test we have test plans instead of containerization docker and kubernetes we have aks azure kubernetes services so when uh, as compared to the on premise and uh, on premise devops or open source devops where we have to go and take the uh, subscriptions for each and every component i know jenkins is free but ansible tower is paid by uh, github is paid the uh, binary code repository jfog is very uh, highly cost mm, like it, it, it is a very high cost because it's an atlassian product is one of the mm, uh, best used binary code repository across the world user story jira you have to invest for subscription containerization this is uh, uh, not chargeable but as compared to this when you're getting everything under a single umbrella where you can do your user story tracking we can keep your source code you can migrate from tfvc to azure repos from github anywhere to azure repos you can do your build as well as release you can do test plans you can do artifacts so when everything is been available under one umbrella that's the beauty that azure devops is providing and it is not like that you can only deploy in azure environment you can deploy in vmware you can deploy in hyper v you can deploy in on premise environment just like is deployment and nginx deployment you can deploy in aws you can deploy in rakuten you can deploy in south pole as well as north pole okay why so why i told the last line because there is one thing as service connection where you will communicate with a non microsoft product or third party products you just have to give the endpoint of that product and you want to deploy there you are welcome maybe jenkins github enterprise server each and everything is there okay now let us come back to this position so this is the devops world okay <laughs> this is the devops world I don't know. Maybe somewhere is a database guy, somewhere is a testing guy. They may be working for one, two, or three tools across their lifetime. But in DevOps, you have to work on multiple tools. You should know multiple tools. Okay. So, as compared to this, we have planning. This kind of tools is there for build. This is the full tools that are available for continuous integration. This is the tool set that are available: Travis CI, Jenkins, Bamboo CI, Teams, uh, Shippable. Uh, for deployment, we have Ansible Tower, Three Clouds, Heroku, Puppet, Chef, Rackspace. Everything is okay. Rackspace is one more cloud that is leading nowadays. Uh, operate for operation, Agile, Jabbix, Giant, as I told, Datadog. All these things are there. So this is a whole bunch of plan. But the same thing can be done using azure devops over here over here okay so this is what it looks like but the most important thing how i will deliver the training what is uh, there that i will be giving i don't know how like i give i training i take batches i don't know how, like there are many different kinds of people over here who is having which uh, technology set or technology background i don't know okay so in the first week in the first week we will be talking about azure components just like the compute the networking and the storage so for azure devops it is uh, like for az400 certification also the prerequisite is either 103 or is there 104 we will be providing 103 uh, sorry uh, either 104 or either 204 uh, so azure administration or azure developer after that only you can do the azure devops 
so but we will be providing a uh, 15 days crash course on azure uh, is and azure uh, pass after that we will be moving towards azure devops okay so first week we will be talking about the azure components in az104 or az204 okay so here we will be going with the compute components the networking components the storage components the database components so that you have a basic idea of what is azure what are the components what is infrastructure over there next second week i have given the name uh, that is a scripting marathon so uh, how i give my training so uh, i have pdfs i have documents but i uh, generally don't share those things I, I, I like if you want i will give you but i don't uh, follow those things we, from day one we'll be directly working in the azure portal as well as devops portal and most of the things we will be working with ISE and and psc ic means infrastructure as a code and pipeline as a code okay so these are the part of automation where in the second week we will be working on the like we will be having training on this person powershell json and arm template yaml very important for azure uh, pipelines terraform git bash and shell okay so these are the things that we will be going through git bash queries or github queries shell powershell is very important json and arm yaml terraform so these three things will these five things will be covering in the second week in the scripting marathon okay on the third week uh, we will be doing one project uh, multiple projects you can say whichever projects you want someone wants dotnet project java project python project whichever projects you want we will be deploying in uh, uh, virtual machines as is deployment or web app whichever things you like so we'll be doing multiple projects live projects in the third week okay so it will take around third week plus half of the fourth week and from that uh, so third and fourth week i will write it over here On the fifth week, we will be doing the containers. That is ACI, Azure Container Instances, ACR, Azure Container Registries, ASF, Azure Service Registry is very, very, very powerful uh, tool that has been used if you are hosting your microservice containers in on-premise. And not but uh, last but not the least, we have AKS. With that, I will also show you EKS and GKE. AKS is Azure Community Services hosted in Azure. EKS Elastic Community Services hosted in AWS. GKE is Google Kubernetes Engine hosted in GCP. AKS and EKS means Azure and AWS can't use Kubernetes Engine because why? Why? Kubernetes is a Google product, so they can't use the engine. They are using the underlying service of the engine, and it is pointing towards the engine. That is a cube configure cube CTL okay so this is what i will be going and with that how i will be taking my training in every day's class we will be having 10 minutes of session where we will be discussing on the last class because i need to understand how how you have grabbed it how what are the topics that have grabbed it next 50 minutes we'll be having the regular classes next 15 minutes i will be showing you my office environment i will be logging for my office laptop i will be showing my dev environment my qa my uat and my prod so that so that it will be helpful for you to understand how in the real-time environment it has been deployed how in the real-time environment it has been used what are the things that they're using i will share my everyday errors or the blocker that i uh, face how i solve it or how my team solve it so all those things i will be discussing 
and next 10 minutes every class I will be discussing interview questions because in earlier batches I have seen that many people tell that sir can you please uh, just uh, like talk about the interview questions because we are trying to move it to IJP uh, in a different project within the organization or we are trying to go uh, switch our companies who are preparing for the interview so I will give you some scenario based questions and interview best questions every day on that regular classes and I will see that how you solve it okay and interview questions so this is how i will be giving it okay huh. and for that for our labs you want nothing you want uh, like you want a already one uh, small thing you just want a code editor it can be sublime notepad plus plus visual record anything you can install um, uh, you need a microsoft uh, free account you just need a debit uh, credit card a email id and a phone number you can have a free account uh, which is valid for one month uh, uh, for 200 dollars they will give free uh, uh, sub uh, subscription account to you which will be having 200 dollars so or 13,300 inr and after that we'll be setting up the vs code um, powershell AZ module because we will be doing the scripting and most of the provision everything we will be doing through scripting only we will be writing scripts and we will be deploying no GUI graphical user interface we won't be touching anything to create from GUI everything will be doing through scripts okay so these are the things huh. okay that ends my uh, that marks the end of my uh, session okay now this is a QA uh, we will take five to ten minutes of the question answer that you um, have or you have any queries So yes, please go ahead and shoot out Yeah, please go ahead guys What are the questions that you have what are the queries that you have what things you want to? Uh, uh, um, uh, ask me, please go ahead, please go ahead guys Uh, do you have in this uh, any programming inside like that? Okay um, uh, Many times uh, people ask that sir. Do we have to do programming? We don't have any programming base. We are from administration. We are from uh, Testing so we don't have any programming base Scripting is different programming is different, but yes someone who has good programming language. It is very easy for them to uh, grab the scripting very fast but if you don't have that's not an issue i will be going from basics on the scripting so when we'll be doing the scripting uh, sessions i will be going from the basics from the starting onwards yeah uh, can you guys hear me right uh, my internet is slow it is showing but you guys can hear me right hello mm, yes hello, we guys. can hear you okay yeah sure yeah, sure. yeah. Yes, any other questions guys? What would be the total duration of this course? Okay, so the total duration of this course will be 25 to 30 hours of class. So it will take around um, uh, Like uh, across 1.2 uh, uh, to uh, like uh, five weeks to uh, six weeks So uh, okay. approx at last 1.5 months, but I will try to close it within five five 5.5 5 weeks okay. Yeah, and the last uh, one week I will keep for the doubt clearing sessions for uh, different interview questions. All those things I will be keeping that. So how uh, it will help you for the intra team so who who work for this uh, infrastructure? So how yes. The, so the persons uh, so uh -huh. people are for this uh, Ansible kind of scripting. So will it uh, help you for the team? For this, uh, for this okay. Activity? So for the infrastructure team, you will be learning the Azure infrastructure and scripting. And if you're telling that what scripting can help you with scripting, you can deploy any components. You can also in programming also there is Bash script, there is partial scripts, and ARM is a part of JSON, Java Server Open Notation. Okay. So Azure Resource Manager. So uh, those scripts you can use it in. Uh, so JSON and ARM template are used in um, uh, programming codes application codes as well as 
infrastructure deployment also so this thing you can be used in anywhere anywhere sap windows linux any crm tools anywhere you need the base powershell and the uh, um, uh, bash or shell to command over windows and linux okay so in this course will you provide an overview or will do we get the practical experience uh, for yes so that's what i told you that uh, we won't be going with the gui graphical user interface through portal mostly we will be working on the scripts and we will deploy through scripts only yeah so through the azure devops so we are not going to touch any the separate component right as, as you said all all has been integrated with uh, yes everything is there as i showed you that all the components are there we will be working on kubernetes we will be working on the kubernetes part also because we have azure kubernetes so azure kubernetes is just a cluster but at the day's end when we will go into the cluster we will configure the kubectl config only so that is kubernetes okay so that aks eks these are clusters these are nodes but inside that we have the kubernetes engine only that we will be um, uh, integrating or we will be provisioning it okay yes thank you yes any any other question guys whatever question you have you can uh, ask me i am open uh hi uh, for the certification yes. point of view uh, we need to write uh, az4000 uh, right yes so if you are starting the micro certification now so if you write az400 you will get the certificate but you, uh, one is azure devops and one is azure devops expert so when you get a certificate uh, well, let me show you let me show you one minute uh, uh, this go to meeting when you get a certificate so um, uh, there is uh, three things okay one is uh, expert badge you get a badge one is expert and one is uh, certificate so if you want to have the expert badge with three stars then you need to give the prerequisite az204 or az104 and after that we will get the expert badge but you can directly give the az400 certification also you will get the azure devops certificate but oh, the expert yeah. badge will come after you okay. clear the prerequisites yeah to just to one in two years ago i have uh, given five uh, double three or uh, what uh, i think logo you are showing me same exam i have given five double three oh uh, no no it will not take now you have to because it has uh, changed advanced okay, okay. so <laughs> yeah i can understand the pain uh, yeah, so every uh, so every year microsoft uh, uh, releases new certificate for business purpose okay mm -hmm. uh, now we have az104 is no recently recently one of friend written 400 but he is telling that uh, i did not get any certificate uh, from uh, microsoft yes that's what no no he yeah. will get certificate he will get the score report but not the expert badge and the certificate for that they need to give the prerequisite because microsoft is itself is telling i will show you means 500 is not going to help me any other right no, anyway no 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 is it 400 prerequisites So that is how their certification tree is. So there is a tree, right? So uh, like they have a dependency. So that's a tree over there. So we have the prerequisites as AZ104. So this is also going to be expire and in that they will be adding for AZ401. So why they do that? Because Azure is ever uh, ever evolving. AWS is also evolving. GCP is also evolving. So to it's add the, the new the, components. Yeah, the 400 going to expire soon. It should be exp uh, the content of the exam. No, it will be not expired. The content of the exam will be updated. Just like that earlier there was AZ103, but now there is AZ104. You can't give AZ103. So the new components has been added and the name has been changed. That's what they do. Nothing else. Okay. 
for example in az 103 there were 30 topics and in az 104 there are 32 topics so to add the two topics they added and after that they changed the name or they increase the number by one yeah. okay yes hmm. yeah thank you yeah any other question guys yeah, suppose yeah, we are yes. uh, going to use that Azure portal, the DevOps portal, right? Dev.azure.com, right? Uh -huh. That uh -huh. is a free trial, right? We can open a free trial account, right? For a practicing purpose. Yes, we will be opening a free trial account. In that, we will be getting um, uh, 200 USD or 13,300 INR, which will be valid for one month. Oh, that is the problem. <laughs> yes. I don't know. But but compared to fine. Other... after that we can yeah, uh -huh. go compared to other if you're telling that aws it is giving one year microsoft mm -hmm. is also giving one year you can open the portal you can do anything but you can provision anything aws does the same they are giving one year but to provision the things that is also one month of validity yeah okay but gcp is giving one year full year one year uh, 300 dollar right yeah, but GCP is new, right? They need to market your product. You can understand <laughs> like Okay, so yeah, so, yeah, like everything is in the uh, business, right? So how people market how people show their things then it will go ahead So I I was working in Microsoft Azure from 2015 when it was uh, Like when classic portal was there. So I have seen a hell lot of changes over here Okay. Yeah, got it. Yeah, yeah, got it. Yeah. Got it. Thank you. Okay. Yeah. Any other question, guys? Please. Hello. Hi, Anjan. Good afternoon. Hi. Hello. Hi. Hi. My name is Apoor. I am sorry that I I couldn't join the session on the time. However, okay. uh, I had a discussion with you. So basically, okay. uh, I would just like to know that uh, these all things which you would be facilitating us uh, will be doing any kind of project for that or like is, what kind of uh, like teaching method would be uh, for okay. DevOps? Okay, I have just told the teaching method, but I will again repeat it. No issues with that. So we will be going mainly with the uh, scripting that is IAC and PAC uh, infrastructure as code and pipeline as a code. So just like in uh, office environment in client environment in Accenture, TCA, CTS, Infosys, IBM, uh, Tech Mahindra. So all those things how they work in client environment will be going like that only. We won't be touching in GUI and we will be writing, we will be creating it. I will show you that also, but that is only take one minute. To write the script to deploy it, that's the main important thing because every day we are going towards the step uh, towards automation, okay? And okay. we will be doing multiple projects. We will be doing Java, .NET, Python, Ruby, multiple projects will be deploying from CI, CD. We will be deploying to see projects can be deployed where like your environment like snapdeal.com, ajanta.com, bata.com, mevi.com, redmi.com. These are web applications, right? Where it is hosted. What do you think? It can host either in three components. First is virtual machines. So the right. web server web server is known as IIS server in Windows okay. in okay. Linux is known as NGI NX server Okay, or it can be hosted in containers what right containers This virtual machine it can be in VMware in Hyper-V in Azure virtual machine AWS virtual machine GCP virtual machine you create a data center in North Pole that is also a virtual machine you create data center in South Pole that is also a virtual machine so okay. that is one way next is containers so okay. here you can either deploy an AKS okay. EKS okay. GKE okay. or on-premise Kubernetes okay on-prem cube Okay. Or nowadays we have past services, so we can right. deploy directly in web app. It may right. be Azure web app, AWS web app, uh, GCP web app. You can create your own cloud, your past solution. That is also a web app. Okay. okay. 
so these are the three things that will be deployed and we will be doing multiple projects for that okay perfect thank you yep good any other question guys um no hi actually i joined late i just wanted to know because you know uh, just in just a five minutes before uh, maybe you might have covered all these things and yeah, i think the meeting also been recorded just one question yeah. just striking in my mind because yes, you know uh, uh, so uh, currently thing, so uh, so the devops school will give the a recorded meeting to each and everyone you can see again okay that's not an no, issue no, so no. Th this is this is just an information that i shared and yes you can go ahead with your question please yeah yeah sure sure uh, actually i'm new to devops and uh, you know our project uh, i just joined in the project so where they used the de uh, devops model and uh, all the things uh -huh. were in git currently and they, they uh -huh. are maintaining everything using uh, git and ansible for now and they are planning to move to azure uh, uh, devops uh, ci cd uh -huh. pipeline uh -huh. just wanted to know a brief idea how it works and uh, everything okay fine Please. cool so here whatever in the training that we'll be providing you will be going through from scratch to the uh, uh, mid level where you will be working on the creation of the ci cd the migration of repositories working on repositories it can be azure repos or github both is there when you create a pipeline we can select the source the source can be six source we can select github github enterprise server subversion bed bucket private repository and azure repos six options we get we will be working on that we will be working on git pull push merge cherry pick uh, git reverse all the things we will be working on and with that we will be deploying the applications in virtual machines or containers or web app using multiple projects so we will be going through azure devops in and out in and out okay yeah so anjan uh, one one question arises out of this so apart mm -hmm. from building or provisioning these web apps or applications uh, we'll be going for monitoring as well. We'll be like, do we have any kind of monitoring project as well? Good. So monitoring can be done on any project. What do you mean by monitoring? It is just that, for example, you have bought a bike. After one month, two months, you wash it, you clean it, uh, you go for the servicing. That servicing is monitoring. So is it specific to Apache or Pulsar or Honda? every bike goes to monitoring means servicing so whenever we will create a project we will be working on azure log and uh, lee sorry perfect i got it it means that we will be covering log analytics perfect that's yes. the main question thank you application insights so there is a different kind this is these are query based monitoring where we will be working on this yes so this so is just kind of sql language only custo queries so it yes. is kind of uh, 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 what is that uh, uh, structured query language you can say okay That's so it's right. kind of a structured query language we'll be using custo queries in the azure log analytics and application insights so this this is used for the monitoring of the infra component just like cpu utilization memory utilization disk utilization disk percentage memory percentage event ids event 64 all these things a virtual machine has events right so to yes. monitor all those things you will be using this application insights this will be used for the web monitoring you can use a web monitoring like uh, for the api is monitoring the api health the api response time and with that you will we will be working on the error codes so I guess you know 403 error, but apart from 403 error, there are above 20 plus errors. There are 503. So it is known as HTTP errors. Yes. So each and every error is very, very important uh, for the application teams. Actually, I, I actually work uh, very closely with application team. So that's how <laughs> I work on this. So HTTP errors, there are different types of errors. Client errors is 4049 and every 
error is there 401402403404405 you haven't heard of 417 418 but there is error of 417 418 also okay, okay. so mainly we work on these errors client errors and server errors okay 503 504 510 515 525 530 539 all those things okay uh, a few are there edited errors also but uh, these are the main errors that uh, people work so okay. those are being monitored using application insights okay Okay. Hmm. Hmm. Any questions, guys? Guys. Uh, oh, what I'm is good. the fee structure and all? Uh, that DevOps school will be uh, conveying you. Okay. Can you just give me the quick curriculum of the course? I joined just now. Actually, I'm in Denmark, so I was late to join. Just give me the quick curriculum of the course. What you will cover in uh, just two minutes. minutes? Yeah, yeah. I'm just giving you two minutes. So we will be covering a, a AZ104. That is uh, like uh, like uh, the basics of AZ104 because that is important. So I will be covering the compute components, the networking components, the storage components in Azure. With that, we will be mainly com uh, 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 like covering the uh, scripting part that is PowerShell, JSON and ARM, YAML, Terraform, Git Bash queries and Shell. And after that, we will be working on Azure DevOps, uh, specifically where we will be working on Azure Repos, Source Control Repository, we will be working on Azure Boards, User Story Tracking, uh, Pipelines, CI and CD Pipelines, Test Plans and Azure Artifacts. Everything we will be doing through YAML scripts, we will be deploying this in either Kubernetes or either virtual machines or uh, web apps. And uh, we will be doing uh, multiple projects, maybe Java, .NET, or Python projects, and we will be deploying into different kinds of environments. Uh, Anjan, just one question. Uh, so if I go for this course, do we have any prerequisites that I should go for a website or something like that? I should purchase a website and all those things like no, you no, require? No. Uh, that yeah, yeah, I got it. So the thing is for the labs, we just need three things. We need a code editor. You can install Notepad++ or Sublime or VS Code at any point of time. Uh, it's free in Google. After that, we need to set up an account. In this account, we'll take an email ID, a phone number, and a credit card. Only two rupees, two INR will be deducted, and we will get a free account where 200 USDs or 13,300 INR will be available. And after that, we want a VS Code and PowerShell and AZ module. We'll be setting it up. So everything will be available, and we will be using the uh, um, professional version only, not the enterprise version. So I have PyCharm as a code editor. Will that be okay? Yeah, 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 that's fine. We we will install Visual Studio Code also. So I will okay. in the first class we will set up each and everyone's environment. So in the first okay. session in the first class I I took I take actually to set up the environment because after that I don't want that someone will be telling that okay this is not working that so it is very important to set up the environment because Perfect. after that I will I will be taking up the pace uh, for the training. Perfect. Thank you so much. Yeah. Welcome. And how many days the course will go? Uh, the course is actually of uh, five five weeks to six weeks. It at last it is six weeks, but I will try to complete within five weeks. Is it a weekend or weekdays? Uh, no, it will be having three to four classes per week. And what are the timings? Uh, timings um, uh, that DevOps school will uh, share with you guys, but I guess. Uh, like I am fine with the morning IST 8 to 10 and night IST uh, 8 to 10 like 8 a.m. 8 a.m. to 10 a.m. IST 8 p.m. to 10 p.m. IST So we'll be having three or four sessions in a week So I will try to keep it two sessions in weekdays and two sessions in weekends Yeah, that's a good combination. Thank you. Yeah, and we'll get uh, you. you'll get the record session also, right? Yeah, yes, 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 yes. They will send the record sessions to you guys. That's not an issue. And I, I will tell uh, to send uh, uh, this record session also. It is actually recording. So I will uh, tell them to share the uh, record session link to you guys, to each and everyone. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Yeah. Thanks for watching. 